don't usually get too excited when it comes to interviewing superstars. But when Muhammad Ali agreed to sit down with me alone, with a few of his friends looking on, and talk to me about the subject of women, well, I rubbed my hands and thought of the fun. And it was fun. I found the talk about a subject like that, how I see women, I'll tell you how I see them through my eyes. Tell me. I see them, the idle woman is like my wife, Veronica. Quiet, don't talk about nobody, don't gossip, don't go in my pockets looking for meddling with business, don't pick up the telephone when I'm on the other end to see who I'm talking to. <laughs> right? That's right. All men, that hits home on a lot of them. Well, Cooks you... the food, totally obedient, and loves me, and don't want to go nowhere without me, and won't go nowhere without me. And every time they come in, tell me what happened on the streets. They have a saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And men see women different ways. Some like fat ones, some like skin ones, some like light ones, bright ones, white ones, black ones. And some like them, some men like the woman to boss him, likes to be handled. Some of him pack. Some men are gonna be the boss, and he will be the boss if he's got a whooper. So, so, what these women are mad about? It's got the liber liberation movement. They mad because men get too much credit and, and too much is put on the stress put on men. Like if a woman lives in a big old pretty house, they call it a mansion. They don't call it a shishan. They call it a mansion. And that makes women mad. And then if woman has a hysterectomy, they don't call it hysterectomy, they call it hysterectomy. They always give men credit, that make women mad. And if a woman does something great a long time ago, they call it history. They don't call it her story, they call it history. And that makes women mad. I think what they should do is they should take down all the signs on the toilets, say men and women, and just take down the name and let, the, we let people go where they wanna go. <laughs> Seriously, though. A, a man. I mean, a woman. I don't know what to say. Seriously. I just can't get away from that man. You don't see no woman walking down the street looking down on a man, kissing him goodnight, goodbye, dog. <laughs> In every position you can think of, the man's on the top. I don't know what to Setting, say. Setting, walking, and everything. Uh, look, look, let me show you something. Look, look. No, 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 push me. Come on, come on. Wrestle with me. Oh, you, you equal. You equal with me, ain't you? No. Ain't you equal? Ain't you equal? I'm surprised. We're not talking about hand, that. And mm -hmm. your little jaws. Yeah. A man could just hit you a little bit too hard and your jaw break. You yeah. just, mentally you equal. Mentally we equal. But we can't be equal physically. Are you ever afraid of anything? Does anything scare you? Rough airplane. Let me show you. <laughs> you on a plane, right? just had your dinner. And it's supposed to be it's 12 noon, all of a sudden it gets dark outside. And a voice comes over. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. We're flying 32,000 feet, fast your seat belts. Uh, could the uh, waitresses and the stewardess take a seat? We're going to hit some rough weather. It looks like we have a little thunderstorm ahead, but we're going to try to go around it. Gee, try to go around it. <laughs> and uh, might get a little choppy, so hold on. You ever been in a plane? Ooh, that's scary. He telling you, you might get choppy, and you see lightning, and get dark, and the plane starts, boom, boom. I mean, I mean radical bumps. Boom. I mean, you really fly. Boom. And you see the wings doing that. Oh, Lord. Oh, I should have took a horse, a wagon, in I would have walked. Oh, Lord, please. And all of a sudden, it's on lightning. People start hollering, ah! And it gets dark, and the plane starts slipping. And you know it's going to split. I mean, you're doing about 600 miles an hour. You know, you've been on a rough plane ride, and the plane's doing everything. I can just, I picture the plane splitting. That scares me. Does being a superstar and being sort of the idol of, of millions of women interfere with your relationship with your wife and your marriages? Interfere how? Jealousy, that kind of thing. My wife know I'm pretty. <laughs> Could that camera come closer? 
Look at that man. She don't, she never gets jealous? <laughs> no. She don't get jealous. She's over there now. I mean, you pretty. I mean, she ain't worried about you. <laughs> ain't you pretty? You ain't no ugly lady. You know you pretty too. Look at that. <laughs> ain't you pretty? You ain't no ugly lady. Uh, read your love poem for me again. Huh? Journey to the land of love. I want to hear it one Riding more time. on my horse of hope. Hold <laughs> you tickle me. Good luck. <laughs> Say it again. You like that? I like it. <clears throat> Riding on my horse of hope. Holding in my hand the reign of courage, dressed in the armor of patience, the helmet of endurance on my head, I started on my journey to the land of love. Okay. You want to ride that horse? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, darling. You, good questions. Well, you win some and you lose some. But I think the champ and I went about 15 rounds on that one. I'm going to call Ali back next week and ask for a rematch. We'll be back in just a moment with evening departments. Right now, we're going to kick things off with a story about Muhammad Ali. Now, this is a man whose life has never been dull. He has changed his name. He has changed religions. He has won, lost, and then rewon the world heavyweight title, only to have it taken from him when he resisted the draft. But he has never faced controversy alone. Throughout his life, Muhammad Ali has always had a woman by his side. Tonight, we are going to talk to one of them about life with the greatest. In the sports world, boxing fans will remember Muhammad Ali as simply the greatest. Whether he was in the ring crushing his opponents or in the media spotlight captivating the fans. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fat, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. Ali seemed committed to creating his own larger-than-life public image. But what most people didn't realize was that in his private life between 1964 and 1978, he was also committed to three women at the same time. At that time, Muhammad was saying that we were perfect for each other, you know, that, that, that we were meant to be, that God had sent me to him and that we were going to be together forever. In the early 70s, boxing fans flocked to Muhammad Ali's camp here in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania to catch a glimpse of the greatest in training. It was here that Ali first laid eyes on 17-year-old Wanda Bolton, who had gone with her cousin Sandy and brother Kelly to see the champ train. He spotted us instantly, and he walked over to me, and he strutted over to me, actually. He <laughs> strutted? Yes, yes. <laughs> and he uh, spun around me and said, don't you think I'm pretty? For Wanda, this was the beginning of a love affair that would result in a very complicated love story. I was overwhelmed. I was so totally overwhelmed with everything that was going on at that time. Very much in love, she toured the world with Ali as he defended his heavyweight title. She left behind school and her aspirations to become a doctor. After giving birth to a daughter by Ali, she converted to the Islamic faith, took the name Aisha, and Ali made her his Islamic wife. I wouldn't have loved him anymore if he were my legal husband versus my Islamic husband. He was my husband. He may have been Aisha's Islamic husband, but Ali was already legally married to Belinda Boyd, with whom he had four children. Regardless to whatever relationship you have with the man, you're going to share him with either another woman, a job, or something else. Belinda was born right into the religion, so naturally she understood all the laws and bylaws of the religion and understood, so the whole concept of having more than one wife. For a few years, they seemed to be a happy extended family until Ali met Veronica Porsche, with whom he fathered a child. The family structure broke down when Belinda divorced Ali in January of 1977. 
And then Ali legally married Veronica five months later. An idle woman is like my wife, Veronica. Cry. Don't talk about nobody. Don't gossip. Don't go in my pockets looking for metal in the business. Don't pick up the telephone when I'm on the other end and see who I'm talking to. Right? That's right. All men, they hits home on a lot of them. Cooks the food, totally obedient, and loves me. After nine years of being in the background, Aisha decided it was time to go on her own. She left Ali and took her daughter to Philadelphia. I realized that this wasn't how I wanted to live my life. I started to grow as a person, and it was as something was missing. I knew that there had to be more. A year after Aisha left Ali, she filed a $2 million palimony suit against him to get support for their daughter, Kalia. It resulted in a bitter four-year court battle. We had a settlement, made a settlement, and um, ultimately the settlement doesn't, Kalia deserves a whole lot more. Kalia is now 16 years old, and she still seems confused about her feelings for her father. He's a very good person, and I hate that I have to, you know, have to say that having him for a father feels like a bad thing, because it really shouldn't, because he is a wonderful person. What kind of a relationship do you have with your father now? I really don't have much of a relationship at all. But when I'm with him, and if I was with him more, I would. Do you feel cheated? Very. For such is life. And I was cheated with him, but I was blessed with a wonderful mother. A mother who was willing to go up against the greatest. Well, Muhammad Ali's personal life did not get any smoother after retirement. He and Veronica broke up in 1985. In the following year, he met and married wife number four, Lonnie Williams. They are still together. All told, he has seven children by four women. Coming up, would you buy a toilet seat for $640? I brought to light some mistakes that the government made. And as far as the government's concerned, they don't ever make mistakes. Government surplus auctions.